Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. I'm Steven Silver, character designer and teacher, dedicated to helping you learn about the art industry and living up to your potential. Whippee! Okay, so today I'm going to start off with a lyric from Leonard Skinnerd that just kind of hit me. And it was a song called Simple Man, which was a great song. But he said, don't take life too fast. Actually, the lyric was, take your time, don't live too fast. And... <laughs> Why I just kind of wanted to talk um, about that is just recently we look at someone in the animation industry who just passed away at a young age, Stephen Hillenburg, creator of SpongeBob, um, 57 years old, okay, um, and had a, just a, an amazing path in that sense and what he was able to create. And you look at someone like Stan Lee, who, who died when he was in his 90s, who had that whole life experience. And then you feel like, did you know, Stephen Hillenburg he got robbed. We all feel like 57 is way too young. We know that. And but so what I just kind of want to talk about today is about living life too fast. Is that is that the goal? Do, are we supposed to live life so fast just because we got to attain something amazing quick we got to we got to be that successful artist at 23 years old because we saw someone else who was a successful artist at 23 years old is that what it means or sometimes these prodigies and they're 6 years old and they can play a uh, you know like music or paint like you've never seen before uh, my son was just telling me he met a, uh, a friend, a uh, person in his class yesterday who was a phenomenal artist. He just asked to see her artwork and he wasn't expecting much. He was thinking sort of like high school stuff that he's seen and was just like blown away. It's just like you don't know. Some people are going to have it. And the thing is, is like, are we, are we supposed to... Uh, just do just hustle so fast and so quick because there's no time. There's no time. We got we got to get this done now, and and then we got to post this stuff, and we got to get out there, and we got to let everyone in the world see us and know who we are, and we got to get, we're going a thousand miles an hour as opposed to why is 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 that are we supposed to go that fast as opposed to just no maybe we're just supposed to go at that pace where just to live life. And, and just experience things and know that things are going to eventually, they, they're going to happen. But do we, do we rush to exhaustion? Do we rush our lives to where we're just, just sick of even doing what we're doing now that we got there? We attained it maybe so quickly. We got there in such a hurry sometimes that we even missed everything that was just along the way because that's what we were concerned about. So then you you grow older and, and you miss out on certain things. I've talked about this in other art talks, the sacrifices. I was just talking to a friend of mine who's a CEO of a big giant hospital, you know, and just talking to him and about the sacrifices that he made. He said, my kid has just gone off to college and now I'm just having this reflection on, you know, what I missed. Of, of my kid growing up and, and knowing that I got two others and I got two younger ones still. Do I repeat the same mistake again or do I, or do I change it? And this is a dilemma that he's in. Does he make, was it, where's the sacrifice? You know, what, what form of sacrifice are you willing to take? And so just not being in such the rush all the time. And I think that's, that's the heart of a lot of stuff that I like to teach, I think, and preach and say is just, just, part of it's like slowing it down not to the point where you're doing nothing you know that you're just like lazy and you're procrastinating oh you know it's okay just to slow down I can procrastinate you know you don't have to rush it's, it's no big deal I'm not talking about procrastination because procrastination is just constantly putting stuff off in the hopes that maybe sometime you'll get around to doing it, but you know, you're not really that enthusiastic about it. So um, what I'm talking about is just trying to get excited about something and just setting the plan in motion. And when you get to it, just making some effort to get to it, even if it's 
once or twice a week. It doesn't have to be every day. I don't do that every single day. I, I got certain things that I'm, I'm working on some projects right now, and personal things where I'm just like, I'm just putting that off to the side right now because, um, oh my God, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thoughts. My dogs are going crazy, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, that took a lot longer than I thought. But what I was talking about or wanted to talk about was even in my, in my own calendar with the things that I have to do, I know that I'm working on something and I have a long-term goal. I'm not trying to rush it and be like, oh, I gotta get this done by next week. You know, so you don't, try not to put that much pressure on yourself, right? So make, just make sure that you're doing stuff that you give yourself enough uh, leeway. And so on the projects, maybe I, there, there might be a week where I might not even work on it once. I might not have time to work on it once, but I know the following week I'm going to make up for that. I'm going to maybe do it uh, twice the next week. I'm going to try to aim for that. It's almost like when you, if you play 21 and you play blackjack and if you're on a winning streak, well then you can, and you've lost money, well then maybe you're going to double down, you know, you're just trying to put build up for the next time, you know, it's the same sort of thing. It's not that you're gambling on yourself, but on the reality, you know what? You kind of are gambling on yourself. You're gambling in a good way. You're sort of like setting yourself up for not failure, but for productivity and creation of something, right? And that's the most important thing that you want to do again is like, don't put that uh, pressure of just trying to maybe be something so quickly because that's what you see other people doing. This is where people get stuck in the mud and where it just goes horribly wrong. So you gotta take your time. And I should have written that quote just in front of me, but it's from A Simple Man by Leonard Skinner. Um, just again, a great song. And and the idea too with just Stephen Hillenberg, who, you know, he, he was, uh, I believe he's a marine biologist and just had an idea and had created a comic and then turned it into this other idea which became something and it didn't happen overnight for him. That, you know, it took time and you don't go into it thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be a huge success. It was rejected in the beginning. People didn't even want it, but the executive who was uh, running things up kept fighting for it at that time. I think it took like two or three years for it to eventually get made. Um, so things take time. Did they think it was gonna be what it was? Absolutely not, you never do. But all you do is say, I'm going to start with something. You know, he started with a comic which led into an animation. Again, not putting things off, not trying to get it done so that there's a blah, 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 blah. Just try to, if you can, it's, it's going it, to, the hardest thing I think to, to sort of teach or it come across in a way is that things do take time because we want the instant results. That's the one thing, that's the one gift that I wish that I could give people. I wish that I could sprinkle something on you, but you know what, I wouldn't even want to because the reality is then you're gonna miss the whole journey and then what's the point? So you gotta be where you're gonna be right now. That's where you are, that's where you have to be. That's it, just stop resisting that. Just stop, just know that you have set a goal up for yourself and that you are working towards it and you're not gonna think about how long it's gonna take, you're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna appreciate it and just not be in such a rush. Anyway. I think I've said it all right there. Um, if you guys um, uh, check out my website, silvertunes.com, I'm coming to Europe, I'm coming to Portugal, Spain, and Hungary. Um, and that's going to be in April next year, so you can check it out on my website uh, down below here. And I'll be doing many more workshops this coming year around the United States. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. This is this is my this is my love. This is my passion. This is my purpose. And. And that, you know, that's that's something that I just kind of, uh, I'm extending this. Maybe some of you guys already turned off the video. Uh, but those of you stuck with it, <laughs> you know, as I'm teaching, what I realize in my life now where I'm at is that I aimed. I aimed to become an artist. I aimed to want to, this is all I wanted to do in my life was to draw. And I didn't know anything else. I didn't go to the school. I didn't want to become 
something else. I just I just wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what was going to be involved. I hadn't I had no guidance. My parents didn't know. You know, no one knew. Again, this was I was in a time before the internet. Where do you research these things? Does a does a counselor at high school know anything about the art career? Absolutely. There was no one to talk to. And so going through this sort of stage and phase I realized that I grew and I nurtured something and it came from uh, just the pure will and the pure desire to eventually become an artist in my life. And now I feel that I've accomplished so many goals. I, I, I've accomplished so many goals, so many things that I set out to do, just one after another with failure along the way. But again, I don't look at it as failure. It was just what it was. And I accepted that and it became what it is and led me to where I am in, 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 I'm fulfilled. I became fulfilled. I, I got to become a character designer in the industry. I was a caricature artist in theme parks. I've worked for many different clients, done a lot of different things. But what I love the most and what sort of like, it just excites me the most is when I'm teaching. So when I'm in front of people, I, you know, I can't even control my thoughts. Sometimes I meet people and in all honesty, I'm quite shy. If, if I don't really know you and I'm, I'm meeting you for the first time, you can't just come up to me and say, hey, Stephen, say something inspirational. It's going to be like, oh, what, what, what are you talking about? It's, you know, kind of, you know, you can't do that. It's all of a sudden, it's going to, it's going to come when I'm in that environment. And again, it's an energy. It's a thing that I feel and it just comes out of me. And all of a sudden I can talk for five hours and wonder, people go, man, what you said by, I said, wow, I don't even remember saying that. You know, it's just, I just sort of flows through me. So because it's this natural for me, that's what makes me realize and understand that this is my purpose, that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, because this is the one thing that brings me the most joy and happiness. When I'm working for the clients and doing different things, some projects are better than others. And I'm just flat out, plain and simple. There's going to be some nightmare clients and there's nightmare projects and there's things. But now I'm sort of like picking and choosing things that are interesting to me or when, when, I, when people ask, you know, it's like, well, wow, that sounds cool. I'd love to be a part of that and be involved in that. So you never know. And, and so I get involved with that. But where my, my, again, where the passion and the love is, is not for me to be working at a studio anymore and working seven hours, seven hours, seven days, five days a week, you know, sometimes seven days a week working on a production full time. You know, that's, I, I've been there and done that. And now I know I just kind of want to teach because it's what I love. And that so this is part of what I do here is just keep telling, keep saying, keep following what you love because it's going to happen in time. Did I always know I was going to be a teacher? No, absolutely not. I didn't know I was always going to be a teacher. I think there was a there was always signs of it at a very young age when I was 17, when I was 13, when I was. You know, just things I got involved with where I'd get comments and that where people, you know, would say things that made me feel like I was a teacher, you know. And then eventually it just kind of one thing led to another and it just it was exciting for me and it was natural for me and it's I, I, it's easy for me and I enjoy it. And my mind is always thinking like that. I'm always writing, you know, curriculums in my mind. I think I got 3000 books in my head, you know, it's just like I always got these ideas. And, and, and what I've learned to do is just trust in all this and just say that this is that this is what I'm feeling. And maybe you're not feeling that. You don't have to be a teacher. But if you are, maybe follow that calling. But don't do it just to do it because you don't really want to do it. You know, I mean, you're not going to benefit anyone you're teaching. They're going to read right through you and be like, you're a shitty teacher. You know, it's just like, I, I'm not learning anything from you. You don't care. You know, and so there's plenty of teachers like that. And I see my kids going through it in high school and all the time in middle school with teachers that just don't care. OK, and there's teachers in art school that just don't care. There's people, people, people who teach who just don't care. For, so for whatever reason you're doing it, that's the reason you're doing it. But whatever you want to jump into, again, what is that sort of like gut feeling sort of telling you? It may not be teaching and maybe you just haven't found it yet. And maybe you're young and this is OK. You don't have to, again, worry so much. Just don't think about it because it's going to happen when it happens. Just put something into action. Just do something and just see where it goes and see what the outcome is and see if it's all, you know, 
you know, butterflies and unicorns and roses and everything else, or otherwise it's just a dead end and you go, dang, that was wrong. And how many times can that, that can happen in your personal life, your relationships, everything else? You go, this is either wonderful or it's not so wonderful. What am I going to do with that? What do I want, choose to do with it? So as I was doing, uh, this teaching became that natural progression and this is why I do it. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Take care and um, I'll see you guys next week. To subscribe to my mailing list and stay updated on future workshops and events, please go to my contact at silvertunes.com and simply hit join mailing list. Until the next time, make it a great week and thank you for listening.